Welcome to Asian American Life. I'm your host, Ernabel DeMillo. I'm at the recently opened Grand Central Madison Station, where the Long Island Railroad connects to Grand Central. This new terminal is not only great for commuters, but also for art lovers. You'll find the work of renowned artists, including this mural by Yayo Kasama. I'll have more on the artwork coming up, but first, here's a look at what's ahead on our show. Healing Hearts, I travel to Guayaquil, Ecuador on a medical mission. You are what you eat. Find out why fermented foods improves your overall health. Poetic Justice, meet award-winning author and poet Kamiko Han. And photographer Leah Chang, frames stories of Asian American communities and cultural arts. This and more on Asian American Life. While embedded with a medical team from the Tri-State to Ecuador, I met a Filipino-American nurse who volunteered to help others. It was an emotional week for everyone at a children's hospital in Guayaquil, especially for him because of a promise he had made to his brother. Yeah, so yeah, so what we do is we'll come to sleep with the mask. Christian Cancino is a CRNA, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. My favorite part about being a nurse is the is being able to connect uh, with people in a very immediate way. So I have 15 minutes to allay their fears, you know, relieve their anxiety, and build a connection that is, um, you know, that really allows them to trust me with their life. It's the skills that were needed for a mission like this one. Cancino was part of a 29-member pediatric urological medical mission organized by the nonprofit Healing the Children, New Jersey. Are you scared? Everything is going to be okay. Yeah, everything is going to be okay. I was invited to follow the team on their journey, one that started in New Jersey, where volunteers packed medical equipment and supplies to the Hospital de Niños Dr. Roberto Gilbert in the heart of Guayaquil. This is our first trip since COVID. Um, so we started planning this trip probably January. We were thinking about it. We started exchanging patient lists uh, February. <laughs> it's very important to understand a lot of this work cannot be accomplished without a host surgeon. Uh, getting a host hospital, the Junta de Beneficio, which supports us when we come, giving us operating rooms. Dr. Joseph Charlemagne has gone on about 16 missions. He's actually lost count. As one of the trip administrators, he had to help find the right team, which included surgeons from the tri-state-based pediatric urology associates, anesthesiologists, nurses, a pediatrician, and translators from St. Peter's University. It was a busy week from start to finish. On day one, families who had been waiting for almost three years sat patiently in the waiting room. As the doctors met with parents in the clinic, the other half of the team worked on preparing the operating rooms and unpacking supplies brought from the U.S. Since we're bringing in supplies and stocking the rooms ourselves, uh, sometimes you don't really know what you need until you need it. Like many of the volunteers here, Cancina joined because he wanted to help families who didn't have access to complicated and expensive surgical care. I think initially when I first started, I think I realized that um, being a Filipino American, I was granted a lot more opportunities than I would have been if I had grown up in the Philippines. In fact, his first mission was in the Philippines in 2019, with his brother, also a CRNA. That trip helped reconnect the siblings who were living separate lives. They were looking forward to their next mission, but then the unthinkable happened. Cancino was overcome with emotions when asked about his brother. Give me a second. Let me go. Okay. You know, unfortunately, uh, eight months ago, my brother passed away, and. Um, Uh, we, we couldn't go on this mission trip. Um, we couldn't go on this mission trip together like we promised, but um, my, my plans to honor him, you know, um, to, uh, my plan is to honor our, uh, our promise and our mission to continue um, helping those that 
are not afforded the opportunities that we have had. Despite a heavy heart, Casino decided to go to Ecuador, one of the first fly-in medical missions since 2019. Here, he and the team performed 40 life-changing surgeries in five days. No. No. Thank you, thank you. Mucha gratitud. A veces la palabra gratitud no, o sea, debe ser una inmens inmensidad de lo que sentimos, tanto mi persona, mi familia, y decirlo así, todos los niños que se han visto beneficiados. Primeramente, que Dios los bendiga y que estoy muy agradecida y que saquen con bien a mi hija mañana. Gracias por operarme, gracias por hacerme sentir feliz, gracias por cumplir mi, mi, mi sueño que quería siempre. It was memories like this one that the volunteers like Cancino will take home with them. And at the end of a long week, a brother made good on his promise. In Guayaquil, Ecuador, I'm Ernabel DeMillo for Asian American Life. Queso. Queso. They're good for gut health, may prevent heart disease, bolster immunity, and aid in digestion. But most importantly, Fermented foods are delicious. From kimchi to kombucha, fermented foods are all the rage, rising in popularity by 150% according to recent restaurant data. But some may be surprised to learn that the superfoods which have superior nutritional value and beneficial bacteria are essentially decomposing delicacies. Fermentation is a controlled decay, a natural process through which the microorganisms like bacteria, yeast, convert carbohydrates such as starch and sugar into alcohol or acid. A complex process familiar to Dr. Sungun Choi, an associate professor in the Department of Family Nutrition and Exercise Sciences at Queens College, who teaches fermentation in her experimental foods class. Fermented food have been associated with uh, several health benefits, including promoted uh, digestive health and a stronger immunity and may help the balance of helpful bacteria by fighting off the harmful bacteria. So that's why it's especially good for you uh, after you've taken antibiotics. That helpful bacteria is commonly known as probiotics, which may reduce the risk of heart disease. Fermented food may lower the several key factors in heart disease, such as uh, obesity and high blood pressure. And also uh, the fermented food may help lower the risk of uh, diabetes. The many health benefits of fermented foods may contribute to their current popularity. However, historians have traced fermentation of foods and beverages as far back as 10,000 BC and found the primary purpose of the process was practical. Humans started to ferment for preservation. To essentially keep food year-round from rotting in extreme temperatures. Scientists believe fermentation of food first occurred by accident in northern Africa, where searing temperatures spontaneously fermented milk, creating yogurt. However, intentional fermentation of food is thought to have started in Asia. Scientists have long believed that the fermentation as a means of preserving food is originated in China. With the prevalence of Asian fermented foods, the perception may be that fermentation is more popular in Asia. But Professor Choi says all cultures across the world have their own types of fermented foods. All humans, whether Asians or not, uh, they like to produce a fermented food. Nomadic society have a different type of dairy fermented foods, such as cheese, yogurt, but the agricultural society have a fermented pickled 
vegetables. Today, the distinctive flavor makes many fermented foods addictive in taste, and the varied health benefits make them a smart nutritional choice. However, Professor Choi says all fermented food is not created equal. Some fermented food have uh, uh, high levels of added sugar and salt and fat. Which is why it's very important to read labels and consume fermented foods in moderation. I would recommend two to three servings of fermented food per day. But the one serving size was defined as a three-fourths cup of uh, yogurt or kombucha and quarter cup of pickled vegetables, the fermented vegetables such as kimchi or sauerkraut. For those people who want to make fermented foods, mm -hmm. how is, is it a very involved process and is it safe? So if you want to make a fermented food at home, you should control the good bacteria. So in case it's a pathogen, it can cause some disease. So that's why so when you make a fermented food at home, you should follow the safety guidelines and you should find uh, the standardized uh, the process. And then enjoy. For Asian American Life, I'm Susan Jun. I'm Vivian Lee. Thousands of years ago, poetry bound the earliest humans together in spoken form. Even in today's digital world, poetry has a purpose. That's according to one of CUNY's own, a poet who's being recognized with an honor many poets dream of. After leaving Raksruha, after crossing Mexico with a coyote. Rhythm and sound are gateways to meaning for poet and distinguished professor Kamiko Han. After reaching at midnight that barren New Mexico border, a man and his daughter looked to Antelope Wells for asylum and were arrested. When I was a little girl, uh, my mother would read stories to me and I loved the sound of the words after forms read in Spanish to the Mayan speaking father, after a cookie but no water, after the wait for the lone bus, I was enamored by the power of words and the playfulness of words. After boarding, after the little girl's temperature spiked she suffered two heart attacks, vomited, and stopped breathing. Art should be a given in one's life. I think the point of life is stimulation. And uh, after food and shelter, I think human stimulation is oftentimes art. As one of four new chancellors elected to the Academy of American Poets this year, Kamiko Han will be an ambassador for poets and their art. She's published 10 collections of her own poems, earned fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts, and for 29 years has taught at Queens College, currently teaching creative writing and literary translation in the MFA program. As a former board member of the Poetry Society of America, the ones responsible for putting poetry in New York subway cars, she wants to use her new position with the Academy to bring more poetry into people's frenetic lives. There is self-awareness involved uh, and self, well, let's say self-connection and connecting the self to the outer world as well. The one she reads here from her collection, Foreign Bodies, offers that connection. She wrote it after reading a news article. The coroner examined the failed liver and swollen brain. Then Jacqueline's chest and head were stitched up and she returned to Guatemala in a short white coffin to her mother, grandparents, and dozens of women preparing tamales and beans to feed the grieving. Writing for people who have otherwise been marginalized is really a political act, and giving my students an opportunity to express themselves is for me as a political act as well. Han also studies and teaches Zuihitsu, a form of writing from 10th century Japan, when Han says a golden age of literature flourished thanks to women. Neither poem nor poetic essay, and meaning running brush, the Zuihitsu is characterized by a lack of structure found in Western poems. Han published her own book of Zuihitsu, The Narrow Road to the Interior. 
when I was a young woman and just really starting out, there weren't a lot of published Asian American writers. Uh, there weren't a lot of Asian American teachers, for that matter. Being an Asian American poet and teacher has meant that I'm also a model, I'm a mentor, and for students who are not Asian American, I'm someone who is different as part of their diverse, increasingly diverse community. And that's really, really important to me. April is National Poetry Month, and Han says she's inspired by the O oh Miami Poetry Festival's use of mundane objects, parking tickets, rooftops, grocery store items, to showcase poetry. If you look up and read a poem on the subway, you are connecting with someone who you don't know. And that connection makes you reflect. Turning the banal into something extraordinary, one word at a time. For Asian American Life, I'm Vivian Lee. I'm Kyung Yoon. It's not every day that you get to talk with a woman who's an actor, a photographer, a journalist, a producer, and an activist. But I got to sit down with Leah Chang, whose extraordinary career can't be reduced to a single word. Yes, that's Tony, Emmy, and Grammy Award winner and star of Town, Andre DeShields, serenading Leah Chang with How Deep is the Ocean? The occasion was the Prospect Theatre Company's 2022 Spring Gala, where Leah was honored with the Prospect Muse Award for her lifetime body of work. It was so moving to be in that room surrounded by all the people that I love. It was very hard to sit on my hands and not photograph all of you, I'm just telling you. Um, so special. Photographing others is Leah's specialty and something she's been doing professionally in New York for more than three decades. In 1993, I specifically decided that I wanted to document my colleagues and contemporaries in the worlds in which I work which were acting, fashion, and journalism. In New York, it's the center of the world. We have access to everybody from politicians to astronauts, certainly. You were part of my Asian Americans in the Workforce series that was commissioned by APALA, the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, of which my mother was the San Francisco chapter president. Leah's mother, Beverly Umehara, a mom of four, had started working as a secretary, but went on to become a renowned labor leader and activist, serving as the president of the San Francisco chapter of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, or APALA. Tragically, she died from a brain aneurysm at the age of 53. But Leah says her mom's indomitable spirit lives on in her. Although I had experienced a lot of early death in my life, I knew that there wasn't a moment to be wasted. And I really knew that I could make a difference. And Leah has been making a difference ever since as an actor, a multimedia content producer, and co-founder of Bev's Girl Films, advocating for more roles and positive portrayals of Asian Americans. I can't remember what you said. Well, I've worked a lot in films from a very early age. All the roles that I got to play or were available for Asian American women at the time were hookers, maids, victims, and gang killers. I'm sixth generation Chinese American. I don't have an accent. I would like to be cast 
as what I'm sitting in front of you right now. And that's the reason why I created Bev's Girl Films. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Bev's Girl Films' debut short film, Hide and Seek, was selected as a top 10 film of 2015 in Asian American Film Lab's 72-hour shootout filmmaking competition, and Leah received a Best Actress nomination. Leah is also the executive producer and host of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang, a TV show she launched in 2022 on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Her first episode featured an interview with Broadway star Eddie Lee, the first Chinese-American actor to play Alexander Hamilton in the Broadway musical Hamilton. Among her future projects, Leah is most passionate about a documentary on the life of her extraordinary mother. I'm Kyung Yoon for Asian American Life. If you haven't seen the gold man perform in Times Square, now you have a chance to see him just a few blocks away. Artist Paul Pfeiffer has photographed one of the most iconic figures of Times Square for a new exhibit at the new $11 billion Grand Central Madison Station. When artist Paul Pfeiffer was commissioned by the MTA and the International Center of Photography to create a public art project for the new Grand Central Madison Station, he sought out one of the most iconic street performers in the city, The Gold Man. The Gold Man, AKA Travis Hartfield, says he's performed as a living statue in and around Times Square for more than 17 years. Like everything about the performance is almost like meditation on class. I'm hoping that when we do our shoot, I want to also shoot your clothes. <laughs> like who? Well, we wanted to like shoot him like he was an actor or a model in fashion shoot. How about like a hand in the back? Oh. Pfeiffer set up a photo session at the prestigious Pier 59 Studios, collaborating with photographers and stylists from the fashion industry. I mean, but start with these as well, and then we'll... Pfeiffer says his intention is to amplify the actor's actions, cross-pollinated with advertising, and the color gold is a loaded color associated with wealth, natural resources, colonialism. Museums around the world are filled with gold objects. Pfeiffer entitled the series of 10 larger-than-life photographs of the gold man and his gilded clothes, Still Life. The way that the gold man is shot is the way that historic and precious artifacts are shot mm -hmm. for a museum. Humans as artifacts is nothing new. Living statues date back to ancient times, performing in Greek and Roman courts. And remember the royal guards in London? They're still performing in this tradition. Pfeiffer, who is Filipino-American and a graduate of Hunter College's MFA program, says still life blurs the line between art and advertising. If you look at advertising, there's gold everywhere. And it exposes kind of like assumptions about what the difference is between an image made for advertising versus an image made for art. In this case, like put in exactly the same frame that an advertising would go in. So like, what's the difference? Paul Pfeiffer's still life can be seen at the new Grand Central Madison station through May, 2023. For Asian American Life, I'm Rainer Ramirez. That's our show for now. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Asian American Life. And make the time to come here to Grand Central Madison Station and walk the hallways to check out the amazing art here. I'm Ernabel DeMillo, and remember, we are now on Monday through Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. We'll see you next time.